just came in and just uh, joined us for this session, okay? Just give me a moment while I share the slide links to you again via the chat. All right, okay. So um, here it is, I'm gonna share uh, my slides for today. Okay, I believe you should be seeing my screen. If you can uh, let me have a signal that you can see my slides, that would be great. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Are you seeing my screen and hearing me clear, loud and clear? Uh, yeah. Okay, yes, thank you. Thank you for the responses in the chat. Okay, so um, for those who have just came in, um, here are the links to the slides and as well as um, how you can install R. Um, and also um, additional files that we'll be using for today's session. Okay, so basically um, today I have myself with, with uh, Tae Kiang. So um, do give me, uh, if, give me some patience if I miss some of your chat uh, and I'll try my best to, to uh, accommodate and, and bring it up as I go along, okay? So basically um, today um, it's on the powerful R graphics and we have Tae Kiang with us today uh, and it's a cozy early morning Thank you for being with us on time. All right, so some of the housekeeping rules before uh, we move on. Um, I think most of you have actually um, have your personal name. That will help us when we want to address the question and I think it's nice to personally address you. So um, that would be nice if you can rename yourself. And now uh, by default, all of us are muted. Um, so if you have any um, questions uh, along the way, you can put it into the chat. I will try to bring it up at the correct uh, or the suitable ju juncture and, and maybe Tae can address that. Else, uh, we will move the questions and answers to the end of the session and that's also possible through email. All right, so uh, it would be nice to have your cameras on. I think most of us are very shy. Uh, so I think I can see Tae and myself already having our cameras on. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's nice to simulate the face-to-face -face with more social interaction and to, to, to know that whether, you know, we are going too fast or too slow, okay? So common question, yes, uh, will the session be recorded? Yes, it will be recorded and it will be uploaded in a secured server for our Anywhere students and staff. So um, Su Yen, who is our NUS Library uh, Researcher Unbound Coordinator, she, she will have a team to, to do that. So give her some time to process the videos and have them uploaded on the website as well. Okay, at the end of the session, we really appreciate your, your feedback. Let us know um, if there's anything uh, that we missed or something that you would like to know more. And we'll try to, to respond to that as well in, in the survey. So um, as mentioned, videos uh, will be recorded and it'll be uploaded. Okay, so um, just to have some sensing of, of you know, uh, people out there, you know, having some uh, interaction, uh, we would just like to know how you're feeling today. Okay, I'm just using this um, platform called The Poll Everywhere. Uh, most of us should be pretty familiar. Um, so maybe you can bring out your mobile devices or you can go to your browser. I find it easy to use my mobile device. Uh, so you can actually go to pollift.com slash mag. And okay, I see responses coming in, the dots. Okay, that, those are not pimples, but <laughs> your responses, okay. And, and saying that, oh, how are you feeling today? Okay, we are, you know, slanting towards the green, which is very positive. That's good to hear. Um, most of us are also feeling that, oh, it's coming to the end of a week, you know, that we can take a break after a, a long week at work, okay. Uh, and it's a short week for us, okay. So yes, let's stay positive and cheer on um, working from home as well. Okay, thank you for your responses. So we will use this, okay, this platform. Okay, so uh, it'd be nice for, for Tae Kiang to know, um, actually, you know, when we wrote out this series of, of um, workshops, uh, the sessions, we want to know actually, uh, where are you from? Uh, we're, we're really curious whether, you know, all this that you learn will actually translate to what you are going to do, be a student or, or you know, a, a staff and so forth, okay? Uh, I'm seeing, thinking, we are seeing, you know, FAS has very big engineering as well. Um, we have folks from psychology, engineering, Duke NUS. Nice. Okay, I think we are all over from science, biomed, um, from, from medicine as well. Okay, thank you. And uh, thank you for coming in and, and learning together with us, I would say. <laughs> yes. Okay, um, and also with the audience that we have today, I uh, want to see whether have you actually attended the session before? Okay, so that we, we know how to pace ourselves, especially um, for those who have not actually uh, 
seen the overview of R that we have covered uh, last week. So mainly, um, the last session is really to showcase the capabilities of R. Okay, we, we didn't really drill down into how you can actually, uh, you know, use R, you know, really very proficiently. It's really an overview, okay, to see what are some of the capabilities of R. Okay, Te Kiang, uh, we, we probably want to take note that at least about 40% did not attend our previous session. So, okay. Um, and and at maybe at this point of time, um, I think it's quite apt for us to ask you whether um, have you downloaded R? Okay, yes. So we, we probably want to, to know whether you have downloaded R or not. You can actually put into the chat and say that yes, 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 no, 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 you know, that at least we have a sensing generally, yeah. Okay, so I think yes, I'm seeing lots of yes. Cool, okay, great. And um, the issue of the R and R Studio is, was very commonly um, brought up last week as well. So um, maybe I could explain at this point of time if Tae Kiang doesn't mind. Um, so because Tae Kiang is really very proficient in R in his uh, area of work that he used and therefore he actually stepped forward to share with us how he can use, uh, how we can use R in that sense. So um, he, he doesn't use R Studio. So if, if there's anyone out there who is very proficient in R Studio, please come forward and, and uh, let us know and you can actually have a sharing session like, like what Tae Kiang is doing. Okay, so in these sessions, um, we are actually focusing a lot on R itself, okay? Okay, so uh, without uh, further ado, um, maybe um, I'll go ahead and introduce um, Tae Kiang, Dr. Tan. <laughs> okay, I know he doesn't want me calling him Dr. Tan, but yeah, we know each other, so I, I call him Tae Kiang quite a bit. Yeah, so um, basically, uh, we know each other because um, I, I started teaching two other modules that stemmed out from all set. So, and, and that's how we get to know each other. And then, you know, he's very nice. Um, he's very uh, open with sharing. And therefore he said, hey, okay, maybe, you know, based on my experience using R, I can step forward and share with the community out there in NUS. Yeah, so we are very appreciative for Tae Kiang um, taking this extra step to share um, with his experience that he has as a research fellow in all set. Um, okay, um, maybe over to you, Tae Kiang. I, I'll leave it to you. And I'll stop share. Okay, thanks, uh, Madeline, uh, for the introduction. Uh, okay, I shall I shall put in the share screen here. Uh, actually, I'm not too good in Zoom, <laughs> to be honest. That might we get better over time each time when we <laughs> use it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yes, we are seeing it. Okay, the uh, you can see yeah. the, the, the graph here. Okay, thanks. Uh, I'm seeing the slides, yeah? Okay, the slide, yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, yes. Um, the, the reason to say you do not open the files, just download a local copy is because uh, once you download it, if you have installed, then it's not probably not an issue. You just download the files and, um, and then you can, you can use the file to, 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 to read it into your R, uh, R system. Right, yeah. So, so, um, and there are, there are installation files there. If you are, you are not um, you are not familiar with the installation, probably after downloading, you can take a look at this. And then the, the procedure, I think, is quite step by step to to, to go through the, the installation. Uh, there's stored in, in in the PDF file, and uh, there's uh, another file that is uh, the material that they are going to share today, and also uh, there are four GIF files. Uh, so during the, the, the session, uh, you can actually click on the uh, GIF files after you unzip the, the, the files uh, from, from, from the website here. So you, you, can, uh, you, you, can, uh, you can see on your own screen uh, on top of what is, is being uh, 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 shown in, 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 uh, during the session, right? Uh, yeah, so uh, today we're, we're going to, to share with you. She's an, an overall view uh, uh, just in case you are, you are, you are, uh, you, are, you have not, then uh, I think uh, Madeline have a <laughs> have a very thoughtful one uh, to put on the, the downloading slide uh, in in quite a number of places, and and especially for the latecomers, uh, this one will be shown uh, in quite in a few slides uh, later on, right? Yeah. So today we'll be uh, introduce you to. In fact, it's a more overall of what our graphics can can. can uh, you can you can use this particular R 
uh, our package to produce a quite wonderful graph. Yeah, so um, it is an overview of our graphic package, as just mentioned earlier. And uh, we will introduce you the three basic uh, general uh, graphic package in R, uh, base and ggplot2 and latest. And uh, these three, the base, the ggplot2, and lattice, and the later two of these packages are add-on package, add packages. And uh, we will show you a list of uh, interesting and creative R graphics that is provided by this package. And uh, so before we go into that, uh, probably it's good to, to, uh, to get a look at what is inside the, what is the, the zip file that they have downloaded. Huh? So these are the files that is, uh, once you click on the download files, you have this uh, one, two, three, four GIF files. So you, you get, unzip the files, so you have all these files in, uh, in your own directory. And there are two R files here. Oh, yeah, there are two R files here. One is the installation, installation file. The other, the other one is the powerful R graphic, which is uh, provide some R codes uh, for today' uh, 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 illustration. Yeah. So, uh, so once you put these two files in a local directory, yeah, you you click on the R icons that will give you in give you this give you this panel. Right, you'll, you'll get this. And then you'll go into R, open script. And then you go into the installation file. You go into, in, uh, you go, when you click on that, you go for the installation files, a powerful R graphic, you open this, then you get this two. You get these two files. Huh? So, because uh, we are going to touch on the, the three basics of uh, our graphic, uh, uh, we have some uh, uh, very brief introduction on, on using these three packages, uh, two packages, add on packages. So you click on these two and you press Control and R or to run these two, right? You press on these two, then a screen will appear. You just follow the instruction to install these two. So while going through, uh, the slides, uh, you can let this installation run. And if you already installed this tool, then, then there's no issue. So you no need to run this step. Huh? So you can just click on this tool, highlight it, because there are only two, two here. So in fact, you can just press Control R. Huh? Uh, just highlight and then press Control R to let the installation. So the first screen that come out, uh, because I already installed, so I'm not going to show uh, how, how it works here. So once you run this, uh, a screen will uh, uh, another uh, uh, a screen will pop up to see that uh, uh, which country you want to to get this two add-on package to, to install. So you just click on uh, the um, any of the countries. In fact, the first option will do. Yeah? So you let it install. All right, you just let it install. So I'll click from this R first. So after install, uh, you'll get some message here to say that the install installation is successful. If, if you get that message, then it's fine, right? Okay, yeah. So the same thing here, you just click on these two, I repeat the, the, the procedures, and then just click on Control R to run it, right? For installation. So, so back to the, the slide. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, just an overview of classifying the R graphics packages that is available in R. Huh? So first, uh, we have uh, three general graphical tools. The base is where you, after you have downloaded the R from the, from the R crunch, uh, the basic R graphic is there. Huh? And these two are the added packages uh, that's available in R. Uh, the lattice and the ggplot2 
are a general graphical uh, package. General in the sense that it consists a lot of graphical uh, features that's available, uh, features referring to functions. Uh. Uh, functions mean, let's say, you want to do a scatter plot, you just issue a command for plot. And then, and that is a function that is available. Yeah, so that is available in the base. So you no need to put in any add-on package if you want to run some graphics uh, from R. But these two are the general one uh, 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 that is different from the base in terms of syntax and, uh, and some of the functionality that's available. So another group is uh, specific. Specific in a way is um, they, are, they, are, they are graphical add-on package that to do a specific graphical, to produce a specific graphical output. Huh? For example, uh, the scatter, uh, scatter 3D is to do a scatter prop in three dimension. Huh? RGL is a common uh, three dimensional visual, visual, uh, visualization package. Huh? Shape and circle is to produce shape and, uh, and circles, uh, circular uh, 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 type of uh, graphical features like the shape one we will introduce, uh, they will have a uh, circular statistics and graphical that's related to that. Uh, like, the, uh, like the cylinder, ellipses, uh, circles uh, will be available in shape. But circle lines is more concentrated on the circles. And uh, this one can produce quite a number of useful graphical features like 3D pie chart. Yeah? And that is also another uh, package that is uh, produce 3D uh, dimensional graphics. And another groups of packages uh, is analytical base. Uh, analytical base means, let's say you, you want, you're interested in classifying classifications, then cluster is a package to do classification based on cluster analysis. Then when you, when you carry out cluster analysis, you can also make use of the graphical functions in this particular package to produce graphs. And like, like this particular add-on package is for carry out fMRI. We'll, we'll show examples of this, the output graphical examples of using this package. And VCD is a virtualized cat categorical uh, uh, package to display uh, categor cat categorical uh, graphics. And uh, this is more on carry out uh, data reduction using certain uh, 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 models like um, a PCA, FA, then you show the results uh, using graphical output. Uh, time series uh, by the name that is uh, uh, indicated is to produce a time series, time series of graphics. After we have uh, using the, uh, you have modeled the time series. And this too is also related to time series. And this is an uh, interactive type of time series uh, fun uh, functions that is available in this particular package. So in all, that means there are general graphics that produce quite a number of general graphs like pie charts, scatter plots, and so on. And these are, there are some specific packages that only concentrate on a, a specific graphical features. And analytical base is you have to run a model in order to produce the graph after you run the models. Huh? So in, uh, put it this way, the analytical base is you have the data, you run a model, so like uh, you run a generalized linear models, regression models, uh, like uh, uh, this function is to, to generate, let's say your data is in ranking order, you do some cluster analysis, then you produce the model in object. And this, using this, uh, you have to, you produce the models, then you normally, the plot functions is to, after producing the model, just plot the models is being generated by these functions, and then you get the output. Huh? So this is how, how, how it works uh, uh, for, for uh, combining the models generated and produce a, gra uh, a finalized uh, ultimate uh, a graphical output by using a function called plot. So, and a specific one like package plot 3D is to produce three-dimensional plot, like for instance, a three-dimensional histogram. And like package uh, supplies is circular visualization. Let's say uh, a function is available in this package, it's called chord diagram, will produce this type of uh, circles flow to relate uh, one variable to another variable. Yeah, 
So that's how we're saying that uh, uh, there's a base, there's a lattice, then ggplot here. So we'll go in uh, uh, more details to describe what, uh, and also illustrate how to generate these plots. Huh? Yeah, so the base is, it is available when the R packet is loaded. Once you load it, you'll get the base. Huh? So it also load at the same time behind the scenes that some of the things there like the graphics and the GR device is loaded and it's automatically loaded. You know the word about that. And probably uh, the start uh, R, most people uh, that first learned R in the past probably is doing, using this particular base to start with. Huh? And conceptual probably is simpler. Uh, and, uh, and construct step by step through the function call is normally is the, is, is the way that for, for the base to, to start with. The next one is lattice, the, the general one. The lattice was written by this uh, gentleman here. And uh, he had to be downloaded as add-on packages. That's why uh, just now we say install packages, uh, record latest is to download the add-on packages. And we, if we want to use them, then we have to say library latest in order to use that. So we have to download it first. Then we, after log, now do it into your PC or in your, in your computer, then, when, then we can call them library latest to, to, to use it. And it's based on the grid graphic system. And it can carry out complex univariate data, uh, especially conditioning and grouping. By condition grouping is saying that uh, uh, is uh, condition the plots by how X change with Y how the x change with the y, condition of z in this instance is condition on the z, the z variable is the one, two, three, four, five z variables. Huh? So this graphical is saying that uh, it's extracted from some more of the base data to describe what is the relationship between three circumference and the h. So there's the h, and then there's a grow in, in the circumference of the tree, of orange tree in fact. So, so they show it here. But uh, we can put all this into one graph. Conditioning means uh, they, there are one, two, three, four, five trees there recorded in this data set. So we can actually separate them uh, into three, uh, three, three uh, scatter plots with a line that link, link the scatter point. Yeah, so that's what we mean by conditioning on Z, condition on the, the tree here. Yeah, so that can be easily done with just a, a very short syntax in to carry out what we call the conditioning. Huh? which is not uh, available in, in base. Uh, another one is ggplot, and ggplot is getting quite uh, uh, common, and uh, quite a lot of people is using it. It's, uh, it's, it's written by this gentleman here, uh, called Hadley Quickham. He's very active in the R community. And his, 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 his name as ggplot is because he's using the grammar of graphics, Grammar of graphics, so it's that's why it's GG, it's grammar of graphic of plots. Yeah, and uh, ggplot package is same as lattice here, it's an add on package. So I have to download and then we use it, we specify, yeah, but we're using it. So you have to specify the syntax here, say load the ggplot, then we're going to use it. Yeah. So uh, similar, you're using a great uh, graphic system and it's, it can also do conditioning as what the lattice package is offering. Uh, the specific technical terms that refer to this package, they call it faceting. Uh, so it's actually similar to the, uh, the, to the conditioning that's mentioned by the package for lattice. Uh, so faceting, that means create subplots for each subset of your data. Uh, the, the number of trees, the five trees that we mentioned earlier in, in the graph. Uh, and and so, so faceting is actually a good way to spot relationship and then in base, you, you have to do construct each plot in a loop. Huh? So if let's say in R, if you're using the base graphics, then probably you have to state, you have to repeat the syntax five times or use a loop to loop five times. So you get a, a, a shorter syntax. Huh? And it's good to color, color it by graph, uh, by group. So let's say it's red here. So you can change red, blue, green, and just issue a simple command. Huh? in GG graphics. So that's a good point about GG plots. And that is the grammar of graphics uh, that uh, 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 Hitman that's referring to. Yeah, so uh, this is uh, just to, to show that what is the, 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 the syntax uh, for, 
creating a scatter plot in base compared to ggplot, and that's a syntax, and lattice, and that is a syntax. So the same thing, the syntax is listed uh, for the, the other uh, three graphs. This is a line graph, a line chart, a bar chart, and this is a density plot. Huh? Uh, to plot the shape of the distribution of a continuous variable. Huh? Let's take a look back to the GG, uh, to the R package and see how we're going to generate this. Huh? So after you have uh, come into R, you can just open file, open script, and then you just load the this file or the powerful R graphic R. Then you get this. This is one of the one of the files that you downloaded from the zip. So. Um, this is the syntax. So as just how we mentioned, we have to execute the two commands here called library ggplot2 because we have already downloaded the, just now the install packages for this ggplot2 and lattice. Once you run it, you'll be inside your system. So in order to say, yeah, now it's inside the system, but when you use it, then you have to issue a, a function called library to bring in this package, a library of letters to bring this. So we highlight this too. Uh, we run it using control R. So once we run this control R, then you load. Huh? So what you say, library this is it attach the package. So the package is attached and uh, latest didn't show it when it's okay. If it, it doesn't show any errors, that means the downloading is okay. Now the loading is also all right. Huh? Yeah, so to do a scatter plot first, we take a look at the data, the orange tree just now. So when we put data orange, There's read in the data, so there's no output in the console. Then we put orange, you tell us this is the group data that consists of one, two, three, var three, three variables there. Three, one, three is, uh, contains the five trees here. So it's coded as from one to five here. And then the H is the, the number of days of the orange tree. And then there's a circumstance after they have one, one, eight, that is the, the circumference. Uh, after 484 days and the uh, circumference grew to 58. Huh? Uh, so this is how one take a look at what is stored in the data with just key in the data and then you show us what is, uh, what is, uh, what is uh, available in the data sets. Huh? So that is the base. Plot is the base command to plot a scatter plot. So if we run this, highlighted it and control R, then you get this. Huh? So the orange is H is on the X exit. And the orange circumference is on the Y axis. So it's always plot X and Y. So if the ggplot, then we say, we have to say that we want to read in the command, the function to use the ggplot is ggplot. Then we say, we want to read it from the, uh, uh, the data set, the data frame is orange. Then X is H, and then Y is the component. Then we we'll see that this is called the aesthetic to, to, to define. So ggplot, if you started, is a bit odd huh? to, to have all this uh, uh, specification, uh, specification of uh, 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 some names that is not too familiar to, uh, to us. Huh? Then we have to say that what we want to plot, we say job geom point, then we have to, it, uh, want to generate a scatter plot. If we run, um, sorry, Taekyung, yes. um, there is a question here. Uh, how do you see the orange data in the console? Uh, uh, once the, the, there's the uh, orange culture in the console, you see. Uh, once, once we generate this, we execute this, you will appear on the console here. Yeah, so I think you have to highlight and then control R. Yes, we have to highlight. Let's say we, re, uh, we clear this. We can always click and then clear the window. Or, or control L here. Huh? Yeah, so uh, on the right hand click and then clear the window. Huh? So let's say we, we highlight orange, then we put control R, 
then you appear on the consult. Okay, I, we hope that that helps to clarify the question. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So we go on to, to the next one. Yeah. So that is a ggplot output, huh? the default output. Huh? Yeah. So the lattice is this command. So we highlight this, then we put control R, then we produce the lattice output. Yeah. So that's to say that we we are using the base, the default one, we have to know that we have to use the function called plot. If we load the ggplot, then we have the function called ggplot. Then we specify it is a scatter plot. And if the lattice is the function to, to generate a, a scatter plot is x y plot, right? Yeah. So that is um, that is a, using a three different uh, the base plus the other two error packages. Their functions are different to generate a scatter plot. And these are these two ggplot and status is a general plot. That means we can use to generate scatter plot and some other plots. So the line plot is here. So the line plot is where to read in the data. This is to read in the data. Sorry, Taekyang, I have a question here. So if, uh, for example, for the base plot, do they have to load or launch the base plot first before they put in the lattice or the ggplot, am I right? Uh, no, it's the list, uh, let, let, let's just say that if we are using, let's say we are, we are doing this. Mm -hmm. So we do not need to load these two package. Okay, what about the ggplot and lattice? Does it depend on the base plot? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, the plot is, let's say the ggplot to, have to load this, to say that load in the ggplot, we want to use the function in ggplot. If we want to uh, latest, then we're saying that execute this to load in the lattice. So we are not using, if we are just concentrate on ggplot, we just execute this command. We no need to execute this command. Uh, and likewise, and vice versa. Huh? Okay, yeah. I hope it's clear. Yeah, thank you for clarifying that. Thank yeah. you. This is it. Base, you no need to execute this too. Uh, so R is a step-by-step -step type of, uh, that means what you, you, you generate here uh, is step-by-step. -step. Means generate the ggplot, you will start with ggplot. Uh, you issue the next one and load in the latest and so and so. Okay, another question is, after you clear your console, right? After clearing, do we need to reload the library? Uh, no need. Uh, let's say the library is only loaded once. Yeah, you know, you load it once. And no need to reload the libraries. Huh? Yes, yeah, thanks. I think there is another question by Nicholas. Um, is the lattice version dependent? Uh, I couldn't uh, understand. Yeah. Uh, let's say that uh, uh, version dependent. Uh, if... Probably if because the upgrading of the R is quite often, yeah. so if, unless the 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 use uh, the writer or the 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 that creates the lattice have an improved version after a new R version being loaded, then you want to use the new version, then you have to reload the lattice. That means uh, not only you have to install it, then install it probably you get the latest one. If you if you there's an improvement, then probably you have to update it. So no, uh, that's how we say install dot package. So it's update dot package. You will update the, the the package. So you can always say update dot package. Then with a bracket, then you update all the package you just uh, uh, installed. Yeah, I think I answered the question. Yeah. Okay. Shall I move up? Yes. Yeah. So the live plot, we are using another uh, soft uh, another uh, data called sales data that read in the information of first two variables, a call person one, two, three, four, five, with the sales records of 10, 15, 20 to 50. So if we were to take a look at, uh, first we execute this to read in the data into the memory. And then if we want to take a look, it's the same as the orange, we have to execute this, control R, then you say, oh yes, sales data is actually uh, stored correctly executed using the read table. The read table will convert all this into a data frame. Right? And in order to display the, the data frame, uh, this sales data, then uh, we can just execute this in to, to display what is stored in, in the data frame after execute this, this command. So for, for the plot, but to say that use this data frame sales data, put person on the X asset and put person Put the sales on the y axis. It's always x and y separated by commas. And that type is L means we're on a line chart. Oh, sorry.
Yeah. Then you produce this. Huh? Yeah. So ggplot is we have the specified the, the plot basic plot is type is equal to L is a syntax. But for ggplot, everything is the same. Specify the x, specify the y, but we must say that we want to have a line charge. Just now is dual is underscore point is scatter plot. Line means when the line charge. We execute this. Then we get the ggplot line chart. Right? So for lattice, it's still xy plot, but the still is similar to uh, similar to uh, the base. The type is also our has to specify in order to produce a line chart. So uh, for lattice and plot, sometimes they share very similar syntax. Yeah. So if you're familiar with the plot syntax, then probably lattice will be something that is. Not all the time, uh, most of the time. Yeah. So this is the lattice output. So now we go on to the bar chart. The bar chart, uh, instead of having plot here, we have to know that the function used to produce one is called bar plot. So we just execute this, then we produce a bar chart. Yeah. So ggplot, as I say, is geo bar. Uh, then we execute this. Then we get a bar plot. Similar, bar uh, but, but bar plot is not is used in base, but bar charge is used in lattice. So we execute this. I mean the function's name is different. So we produce a, a colored bar charge. So that is the default of lattice. They put in uh, the marine uh, the, the colors into the graph. The other two does not, see? Yeah. So we go on to the next examples, uh, density plot. Uh, we execute this to create a data frame called H data. Uh, so we can take a look at what is H data there. H data there, this is H data. H data will have 200, six, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's 200s, 200, 200 uh, uh, data points, 200 data points that generate from a normal distribution. Uh, that's starting with this. Seed. So every time when we put in the seed commands here, so every time we generate uh, the same set of these numbers, 200 numbers will be generated. If you do not indicate this, every time we execute this, uh, a different set of 200 variable will be generated. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, so we want to, uh, for base, to generate a density plot, we have to put in the density function within the plot to generate the density plot. Huh? So okay, sorry, Tae Kiang. Yes. Uh, maybe at this point, um, since you are actually illustrating about the data in the table, yes. uh, there is a question um, asking, the table is already given this example. So how can we change the variables and change the values under each variable? And even some like, you know, when they have the Excel data, yeah, how can they load it in? Yeah, so the Excels have to be loaded in first into R, uh, into, the, into the R before executed. So that is, um, that is, um, that is a part of the data management. Uh, uh, we're not going to cover today, but uh, uh, put it short is the data have to translate into the R as a data frame or some other data format in order to execute using all this function like plot, density, and ggplot. Yeah, so that, that is a step that we're not covering here. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, there is another question by Michelle. Can you explain what does R norm do again? R norm. R norm norm is norm is normal distribution r is randomly select from a normal distribution with mean zero and standard division one with 200 variables uh those in the um those in the not in the statistical background is a bit more abstract to you like that means uh, in short we generate 200 variable from a distribution that is a normal distribution yeah, that, that's back to, 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 to the statistics. Uh, but in short, the H data store 200 variables. So we have, because we have 200 variables, so we can generate a plot of these 200 variables that looks like this. 
So it's close, probably, this is probably not too close, uh, close to a normal distribution. Okay, and also another one uh, about the explanation of set dot seed. Oh, uh, set dot seed is every time if you put here, you always get this distribution. If you don't put this one every time in general, you would you get a different distribution. That's it. Uh, for those in the engineering, will probably this will be uh, uh, quite uh, uh, quite com uh, or those in in doing some simulation or doing something like that. Then we want to generate. Let's say in this instance, 200 variables, we always get back the 200 variables that we want. If you don't put this in, then every time you generate using a R norm, you'll get a different set of variables. Okay, then we, we don't, don't want to do this. We regenerate this one. And then we reprop this one. Then the, the shape change. Right? So if we, we put in here the set, then we regenerate this. Then we use the plot here to get back the same. Yeah. So that is to say, if we want to randomly select from a normal distribution, then get back the same 200 uh, data points, then we have to put in a seed. Okay. Um, one last. Beyond, sorry. Uh, uh, beyond, one more last. Uh, this, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so one last question, sorry, Te Kiang. Um, uh, when would you advise um, us to use the base versus ggplot or lattice? Okay, uh, I'll cover in the, uh, in the next few slides. Uh, I, I don't know whether it's the next slides. Yeah, so uh, we'll go through that and hopefully uh, just wait for a while. <laughs> yes, okay, thanks. Uh, uh, for ggplot, let's say this is uh, the base, right? So base is using plot and density. Uh, I mean, so far you say that, wow, there are so many syntax to, to take care of here. Yeah. Uh, that is how, uh, that is, uh, uh, that is because diff, the R is developed by different users. So we'll use a different function to execute a different, uh, for a different uh, output. Yeah, so when you execute this, this is the output for uh, using a ggplot. Huh? So if you use a lattice, it's density plot. And that is a density plot produced by the lattice with the plot here. And then they also give you uh, some sort of like a, a rub, a rub uh, uh, to see that how dense is this. Is it, there are more, uh, here is it, there are more, more here, but they also so put it in a, in, in a, a line type of uh, uh, scatter that showing that the density is, 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 is uh, the high density of, uh, in this particular area, right? So that is, uh, uh, how generate a density plot to uh, using lattice. Uh, I, I shall go back to the, the PowerPoint so you can see that uh, how, how, how you can compare and contrast the this scatter plot is almost the same. It's just like that. So you can easily see that uh, it's a different syntax is used for the base, which is the default once you load it using the add-on package called ggplot and lattice to produce scatterplot. You can easily recognize that the background is a bit gray here. So you see something that is gray. Uh, you don't know that that is from ggplot. Uh, yeah, so the same thing for line with a different syntax, the bar charge with a different syntax, and the density plot with a different syntax, right? So the next question is which to choose, right? Uh, base, lattice, or ggplot, huh? Yeah, actually some, sometimes it's a a personal preference and whether you're you are more familiar with the grammar. And ggplot grammar sometimes can be quite uh, confusing, uh, especially where you're you are, you are just getting to know ggplot. Uh, yeah, it can be quite confusing, but it the more, because the syntax is more complex, so the changes that, uh, the things that you want to generate uh, is more, uh, more, more syntax, so more demanding, but um, the things that can produce by ggplot is actually uh, is more interesting. Yeah. So uh, whether you're doing uh, some presentation, you're just exploratory. If exploratory, probably uh, you know to produce a very beautiful output, then sometimes the base can be uh, quite straightforward. Huh? It's just a plot x comma y, then you, you, get, uh, you get the plot. Huh? You just want to examine it. So you want to produce a very beautiful uh, plot uh, then it depends on uh, which one you want to go for. Yeah? 
and how familiar you are with the syntax of the GGPR. But the thing is, having said that, the GUI is coming along. Right? There are more users that are using that. So you can always click and click, a uh, click point and click to produce the plot you want after you generate a simple, a simple plot. And uh, if you have to just as a push graph for publication tends to explain certain things, but probably three will work. So. And uh, so they're, they're, in fact, uh, the, the, three, the three ways of doing a, a graphics uh, uh, is not the only three ways of doing it. There's much more graphical packages that's available uh, in, the, in, 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 in R. Yeah? And what you want to create impact or diversity, uh, and then probably ggplot is the one uh, you, you can go uh, in a longer term basis, you want to go for ggplot. So if you are, uh, uh, your, 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 your research is more on visiting, conditioning, then go for ggplot analysis because they are the one that can produce the, the, the testing and the conditioning. Yeah, I hope I answer the question. Yeah, so uh, now it's just to show the rest uh, will not be touching on the, the, the all codes and explaining the syntax. Uh, because the explaining the syntax is to give you a feel of how when you go into R, what are the expectations with it? Let's say you are using different packages. Uh, the syntax will be different. Uh, have to know a uh, 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 syntax that is uh, that what the user has created. Let's say in lattice or in in ggplot. Huh? Yeah, but the following is to show you uh, what you can expect to generate uh, from from R itself, not restricted to base or ggplot or lattice. Huh? Yeah. So first we say that uh, we just illustrate with a bar charge that. These are some of the possibilities charge, some of the charts that you could generate, uh, could, could be generated from our package. Huh? Uh, first thing we have, conditioning we have shown uh, one uh, on using the orange tree, circumference and the edge. So we will see what, how, what is a circular and what is a stack circular bar charts look like. A back to back bar chart probably is quite familiar with us. And uh, a more creative one is the overlapping bar chart, which is uh, also named as a Murray Macro replacement chart, a very technical name that's using. And uh, we show another circular stack bar chart. And we'll have um, a rose diagram, which is uh, a another way of showing a bar chart. And a, how a three dimensional bar chart uh, with the scatter plot can be produced using R. So there you go. So this is a uh, faceting. This is, can we use ggplot or lattice? The one that is uh, shown here is in fact using ggplot where you can see that there's a gray background here. So it is a spot that it is actually using ggplot. Huh? Yeah, so this is uh, the, the week, week one to week four of the student attending uh, English class, math class and science class. Uh, you can see it's varied. Yeah, so you can actually put a different colors uh, for the student that hanging week one to week five, and then you can see that the bar charts with week one differ uh, by the weeks. Huh? So this is what I call faceting or condition, right? Just like the one that illustrated uh, five trees with with a scatter plot. Yeah, yeah. A circular bar chart will put the bar chart that is in a continuous platform here into a hollow circle here. And you can also see the bar chart here, but is uh, in is printed outside the circle. And name you can give a name to it, and you can even uh, give the the labels uh, for the bars. While here is very difficult to do. Right? Yeah. So this is a circular bar chart, which is a bar plot where bars are displayed along the circles instead of a line. Yeah. So this can be done using R. And of course, uh, a, a stack bar charge means each of the bar here is stacked up uh, with different variables here. So they are value one, value two, value three, uh, represented by the three colors, and it is stacked in, into a bar. So it's what I call a stack bar charge. So a stack circular bar chart is to put it in, into a circular 
uh, outside this, uh, the circles and with a proper name, is, labels is being labeled for each stack bar. So that also can be produced by uh, R. Yeah, so back to back probably is uh, one that we have seen uh, quite often and display in, uh, let's say in the age pyramid here, shown here. So it's back to back, so you can compare the female and the male distribution represented by uh, bar. We compare how the distribution of these two genders. Right? So this is a more interesting one. Uh, that is uh, a, stack bar, a stack bar chart is printed in pink while uh, a bar chart is within it for the stack. So uh, use it if you think that this could convey the message to, that you want to, 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 if you want to present this bar to convey a certain message. Yeah? Yeah, so it's two, it's, it, it, uh, it shows two sets of uh, informations uh, within uh, the graphics. Yeah? And the there's another way of, of presenting a circular bar charge. Uh, so you can see that uh, this is uh, saying that uh, how, many, how many music uh, instrument sales uh, for the violin is 81%, piano is 77%, Dow to cello is 60%. Uh, we, of course, we can present in the bar charge, but this is a circular one is saying that, oh, uh, the, the, the bar is in a circle form, that up to 88%, a lower of 77% for the piano, and down all the way to 60%. Uh, so the area of the bar, uh, of the, of the bar also show the, 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 percent, the percentage attached to the circle, right? Yeah, so there's another way of presenting a bar charge in a circular uh, manner. Yeah, so this is the conventional bar chart on the left that you can see here that show uh, a team A monthly sales from January to December with a January a higher one, then it dropped down in February and then it grow uh, to a high in December, right? So a gross bar chart is the one that without a hollow circle in the middle. Yeah, so it also show the distribution of uh, of the sales for the team A here uh, that highlighted with different colors and with a, with a legend that show uh, uh, with the colors that uh, are for, for the 12 months, right? So there's another uh, circular bar charge that uh, named as a rose diagram. Yeah? Yeah, and, and this one is a three-dimensional bar charge and scatter plot. So there's a, bar, there's a bar chart on top, but there's underneath it is the a scatter plot and you can rotate it. Uh, if, you, if you want to, you can click on the GIF and straight away show this. We'll show it later with this uh, in the animation section, right? Yeah, so this can be rotated. So animation is also one of the strong uh, features that's available in package R where you can, you can do a rotation and all that. Uh, with, uh, with a three-dimensional uh, diagrams that you have in mind. So you can see how, how it's it relate, uh, not only two variables, but to three, three, three variables here. And you can add a uh, different type of graphical output that you want and combine it. Yeah, uh, after this, we'll show some of the graph, interesting graph that's available in R, uh, divided into five sections. One is to show how we can display discrete and categorical variables into, into, into a graph, and also association and modeling, time series, uh, map, shape, and circles, and animation, right? And we'll show some animation output here uh, uh, at the end of the session. Yeah, discrete and categorical. Right? Yeah. So uh, this is a bar chart on the left. Uh, Lollipop chart is a long line with a dot at the end. So that's why it's named as a lollipop charge plot. So that's a lollipop. Huh? So uh, children like that. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that can be produced uh, uh, in R. So a lollipop plot is basically a bar plot where the bar is transformed in a line and a dot at the end of it. So it shows a relationship between a numeric and a categorical Categorical variable uh, referring to A to Z here, and 
the numeric is uh, the length of the loading pole, the stick. Yeah, uh, the loading pole charge or the bar charge could be further improved, and uh, the name uh, they give a name to it is called it's diversing. So it's ranking in in a way that uh, uh, for the, the bar charge here, the diversing bar charge here, a uh, separate by a vertical lines here, dotted lines here. On, on the left hand side is those with the negative values and those in a positive values is shown in another color in green to show uh, what is the, 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 the values of the car. Uh, in, in, in this instance is a normalized uh, marriage and the name of the car is on the y-axis. Huh? And normalized means uh, they want to put in a range of probably uh, with a mean of zero and then probably range from minus two to two here for instance, yeah? that's why it's because it's normalized. So, so the mileage can be any figures, that, but they put it into a, a range that uh, zero is the center and then negative will be lower and then positive will be higher. Yeah? And for a uh, diverging uh, low report charge is that uh, it is shown as a, a shape of a low report. Uh, uh, in this graph, they even put in the values here so to show the values, the positive values for the green dots and the negative values on the left hand side of the loading pole charge. So uh, the legend can be added here to say that this green is above uh, average and below with a different uh, colors. Yeah, so a pie charge is quite, uh, uh, we are quite familiar with it, but normally pie charge also suffering from certain a disadvantage because sometimes if let's say there are one, two, three, four colors here, if the four colors is uh, in quite equal proportion and compared to another pie charge, is the slightly increase in why it, the pie charge may lose is uh, comparable uh, for two pie charge. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So there are, there are some other variation for that. And one version is the wafer plot. It looked like a wafer, that's why it's called wafer plot. Hi, um, yes. There is also a question that, you know, where can we get all these codes for these graphs that you are referring to? Uh, uh, my, my, uh, I have the codes, so, but uh, the codes is all scattered around. I didn't, I didn't put them into one place. And uh, if you search the webs, all these things will appear. Most of the things will appear. Uh, it, I actually get all this material from the webs. So if you Google it, you can get all, 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 uh, most, of the, most of the things could be there. Maybe would you like to illustrate maybe, for example, the scatter pie chart uh, codes where, for example, you go to Google and then you search it and then, yeah, uh, would you like it, to show it? You just put scatter pie chart. Okay, show it. Right? Uh, let's go to Google. You got it. So it's quite easily if you Google it. Is it? It's not something that is you really have to search. Uh, is it? You get uh, you, you get the syntax here. Uh, you can just cut and paste the syntax. Then you tell you that uh, yeah they use the the R norm here as well uh, to generate the data. So this is this is the part that generate the data. Then they show head head of B means the first six observation. And then you see, they use ggplot too. Right? And then the Joe scatter plot. But the Joe scatter plot is not in ggplot too. It's an add on extension to ggplot too. Yeah, so um, I don't know whether they, the, they do not indicate here the Joe scatter plot is in which package. Yeah. Let's see whether it's stated here. No, it's not stated here. But they are using an add-on package. It's an add-on package of an extension to ggplot2. What it means is the ggplot2 will not produce this 
will, will not produce all the, uh, the, the scatter plot. Huh? Uh, you will produce uh, uh, probably a pie charge, but not the scatter pie charge. Another author that used the basic function in ggplot2 and then write a separate add-on package that were able to generate the scatter plot, a scatter pie, pie charge. Normally that is, a, so there's quite a number of extension to ggplot2 packages, add-on packages as well. Yeah, so uh, that one were, um, uh, yeah, so, so the syntax is coming from add-on package, like the geo scatter pie. The, uh, the, you, that's how we show a uh, geo point is a scatter diagram. Uh, geo line is we draw a line chart, but geo scatter pi is not in ggplot, is written by some other users. Uh, hopefully, I explained that. And then to combine the map with the scatter, then probably you have to go another step. So that comes with uh, what you have in mind and what you want to do, and then. Uh, searching, searching for add-on packages that suit sometimes will take a while. Yeah, even though I say that scatter pi, you can you can get the plots quite easily, but knowing the syntax and produce it will take a while to understand how it works as well. Yeah. yeah. So this one is world map plus scatter pi. So you can see the 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 size of the the pie chart is indicated here, and then your as long as you uh, indicate the longitudinary and the lat latitude of the of, of of it, then the scatter plot will insert into the appropriate uh, position uh, for uh, the world map. Huh? Yeah. Now we we illustrate this is uh, I, I think I illustrated this quite some a number of times really, and it's my favorite illustration to turn. Uh, tables into a graphical form. So uh, this is a table that consists of 1,744 pairs of husband and wife on the 13 house has listed here to say that uh, who is doing it. So these are the 13 house, uh, house tasks. The wife is doing the laundry is 155. Preparing main meal is 124, one but they don't do repair works and they don't do uh, uh, planning of the holidays. Huh? Yeah, so this is the tables of 1744 pairs of husband and wife talking about who do the task, whether the wife is doing it, the husband is doing it, or alternating, or they jointly do it. Huh? Yeah, so it's very difficult to go through a table like that. Huh? Uh, uh, especially this is table is not too big as well. Uh, you can spot that wife is doing that, a husband is doing the repair job, right? Yeah. But if it's bigger, then probably there's some way of representing it in a graphical form. So there's one way, it's called a balloon plot. Uh, it's indicated by uh, a circle. So the one that is doing the most will be have a bigger circle. So the wife is doing laundry here, but the wife is hardly doing how it is. You can see there is zero there, right? So the husband is actually doing a repair work. Then jointly is uh, probably they plan for the holidays together. Yeah. So there's one way of uh, representing uh, uh, tables in a graphical form. And another way is a, a mosaic plot. Uh, you can see that the laundry, the list of the tasks, house tasks is uh, on the x axis. The y axis is who is doing it, the y alternate. Y is represented in red colors, as it jointly is represented in pink colors. So you can see that the laundry is carried out by the y, you can see holidays is uh, jointly, and you can see that the blue colors and repair actually is the husband, right? Another way is to carry out uh, analysis uh, through uh, some statistical uh, bordering uh, called correspondent analysis that turn uh, the tables into a two dimensional space. So you can see that the husband is, uh, who is doing the job is painted in red, uh, the task is painted in blue colors. So you can see the husband is doing driving and repair here. So they're close to each other in these two di dimensional spaces. And uh, jointly is holidays. Um, Why is preparing meal, breakfast, dinner, and doing the laundry. Huh? 
So another way of representing this is uh, an wave diagram, which is a flow, flow, flow type ideas. Uh, you can do it in two ways. Uh, being, let's say, uh, who is doing it here, you can see that the flow is out from here to laundry, uh, a bit smaller to main meal, but very little here flowing to others, right? And then uh, let's say jointly, jointly is mainly it's holiday. You can see the, the large uh, proportion of, of painted in, uh, in this, uh, that flow from jointly to holidays. Huh? So the other way around is you list the tasks here and then who is doing it is here. So you can see also laundry is mainly to the wife and then holiday to join, uh, jointly they, do, uh, they, they carry out the, the task and then repair probably flow to husband. So there's more like a flow type of uh, diagrams here. And uh, association and mothering. Uh, scatter, uh, scatter plot diagrams um, is have uh, have developed into putting in a lot of graphical form into it. Uh, uh, let's say uh, the this is a uh, this is a data that's uh, taken from IRIS. The data is IRIS, which uh, measures uh, three types of uh, of, uh, of flowers that measure their sepal length and width, and also the petal length and width, and they want to know. So as, uh, to, to the, for, for the scatter plot metrics is to know what is the association between these four variables. Yeah. yeah. Or on the diagonal, you can see the distribution of this uh, length and the width and the pedal length and the pedal width here on the diagonal shown in a density plot here. And then the scatter plot between the, let's say the sepal length and the sepal width here is shown in different colors uh, for the for, for the tree species, and the same thing, uh, and the correlation between the two variables is printed in uh, in, in in numbers, uh, which represent the correlation. Which saying that here is saying that the the sepal length, the sepal length, and the pedal width is very high in relationship, zero point eight one eight. Is even higher if you compare the pedal length and the sepal length, which is 0 0.872, but very low, comparatively, a very low relationship between sepal width and sepal length. Mm -hmm. So the same thing is uh, appear with a different, uh, different uh, graphical output by changing the scatter plot to something like a polygon. So you can see that actually there are two clusters here, two clusters here, two clusters here, and two clusters. Here. Yeah, so there are different ways of representing the scatter metrics as well. Yeah, say a control plot here. I uh, see that the, this is from another uh, data set for diamond, which, uh, which represent the carrot, the, which is a continuous variable, the cut, which is uh, divided into one, two, three, four, five groups here, whether it's a fair, uh, is an ideal cut, and the color is uh, graded into these categories, and the clarity of diamonds is graded into here, and also the depth, which is uh, in the continuous variable. So you can see the continuous variables is uh, plotted in uh, density, while the other is a categorical category variables is represented in a in a histogram. Huh? Yeah. So so that is another way of um, uh, to examine the relationship between. Uh, let's say in this instance, one five variables in a scatter plot matrix. Yeah, for those that is doing some modeling, uh, that dealing with a yes and no, probably you will use a logistic regression to run it, and then the, you'll produce a probability that range from zero to one, uh, controlled by a covariate called x. So, for any instance, uh, that means the covariate x will be low in probability here. Uh, with a coverage that is near the zero. When the coverage X increases to 20, the probability is reaching one here. So we can put in the estimated probability after running the regressions, also shown the, uh, in histogram here of those that score a zero and those that are scoring a one, and also the density here represented by the red dot. Uh, the red 
Yeah. So uh, the, the scatter plot with ellipses and text probably is useful for cluster analysis. So we we'll examine uh, here, uh, what is the relationship of pedal width and pedal length? So we have a scatter plot here. Then uh, the result of the uh, cluster analysis uh, is, 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 uh, is, uh, is circuit by, or rather uh, circuit by a ellipse. And then it can be inserted in the text to say that this is Sentosa, and that is the other two species of the iris flower. And you can, text can be inserted to explain uh, why is it so. And also uh, the central of the, of the ellipses, or rather the center's estimated means, if you are using means uh, uh, clustering, that could be plotted here as well. So that's available in R especially you're doing some classification of, in this instance, two variable, uh, that could be a useful graph output. And the time series and longitude, uh, time series and longitude, time series when you have a, a lot of points over time, longitude probably you go into a few uh, time points, but we have a lot of observation each time. And this is a seasonal sub-series uh, plot which is, uh, it is offered, I think, by the package called, let me see, a uh, package called FEAST, F-E-A-S-T-S. -E so it's another add-on package that add on to uh, the ggplot2 that, that can, uh, using more, uh, uh, a few lines of syntax to generate this plot, to see that what is, uh, what is the beer, in this instance, the tobacco, the bricks, how is it changed over time, divided into quarter, there's the facetting part, and then what is the values here on the x axis and what is the values on the y axis here, right? So that is an add-on package. Right? And um, a heat map for Turan, so uh, this is a, a polio. Um, so the polio rate is here, so that means very thin here means uh, uh, that close to white color, that means the rate is very low. So it's turned darker, it is high. So this uh, heat map, uh, heat maps represent colors, uh, using colors to represent the, the, the rates. Yeah, so here is listing uh, the state in the US and see how, when is the rates that is highest. You can see that it's highest for this state and uh, it's highest in this stage in three occasions here. And the highest in this stage for uh, for the other stage, and um, and um, now there there are some description here for the serious symptom of the, uh, uh, the basic uh, reason for showing this is uh, we're still in the middle of COVID nineteen, so so another one to see that how we can make use of a graphics that makes use of color, uh, which is new map heat maps to measuring trends. Let's say breakdown by cities or by the state here and then show how serious is the polio situation uh, from 1930s to 1960s. Yeah, so that is another one that is uh, offered by this package uh, with this uh, geo uh, calendar to produce this. That means they can break down into months and then you can see the trends on weekday and also in weekend. A week days of the So there's a more uh, a quite, um, uh, this is a, uh, a, a quite a creative plot, I, I suppose. When I see this, I say, wow, this is a very, very good one. Huh? In fact, it can, uh, uh, it can have a clear pictures of showing quite a lot of information in one plot. Uh, you can see that each of this is actually a density plot. Huh? Yeah. So, like generally, density plot here, then the temperature grow into a higher temperature in, in the months of May and June. And the temperature can be shown in the legend here, while it turned into orange color uh, when the temperature get higher. And it go below two with uh, that close to purple color or blue, right here. Yeah, so you can see uh, each month there will be a density plot here. And you can see, you can, you can, hear, uh, you can, see, you can see the shape of the temperature uh, uh, being on the x-axis, how, how it looks like, and then how the colors change 
to represent the change in color from months to months. So it's quite a useful, uh, a use as a useful plot. It's called a ridge line plot because uh, it, it is taken from a ridge line of the, of the mountain here. So that is another density plot uh, showing uh, what is the spray uh, for, for the, the type of spray and how is it, uh, uh, what is the, the survival, right? The number of dead, the in, insect being treated with, uh, with this uh, spray uh, for the, uh, for this six uh, 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 spray. Yeah, so um, the map, uh, the ggplot produce maps as, uh, as long, uh, uh, so it's quite useful. Uh, I, I didn't really use map a lot. I only produced the map to, to, to show here to say that there's available features here. So there's a map that uh, uh, represents the EU country with the UK here, but you can also exclude the UK with the same map. Huh? So, and uh, that is showing the Spain and the UK, what is the flow from, I think, I, I can't remember the, the exact, probably trade flow or something like that. So you can see how it moved from from one country to another using the map. And that is showing uh, another heat map uh, representing the assault and the rest. Oh, that is happening in the US quite seriously. So, uh, so it's to, to show another, uh, another diagram that uh, is also using the heat map concept of using the color to show uh, how, how many assault arrests per 1,000 uh, residents here to show the 1970 violence crime rate by the US state here. So you can see it's quite, quite bad in this two stage. So it's not too bad here. Okay. Um, there are packages that using 3D, uh, that produce 3D plots, huh? uh, like shapes, a ball shape, a ball shape with uh, inner different colors, a uh, tree, uh, uh, three circles or, or circles or ellipses type of uh, plot. A uh, 3D with a 3D uh, to re uh, represent a 3D histogram and different type of a rectangular shape. You could be the, using the R package as well. And circular, you can draw a clock using R. You can draw a Bakwa and Tai Chi graph using R. I think the, the syntax is a bit longer, I think. Uh, the next, uh, I can do 20 or 30 lines uh, in order to produce a plot. A dash block and a cut diagram. I so, uh, can refer to this uh, if you are interested in uh, circular visualization. Uh, animation, I think, uh, comes to, 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 to the, uh, near to the end. Um, this is uh, using this package to produce this. Uh, the reason for not sending this uh, is not in GIFs, that's why it's not sent over. Uh, let, let's, uh, uh, let's see how, how, how this uh, look like. Can you see the graph? Okay, yes. So this is a, a graphical output uh, produced by the, one of the add-on package. So you can see that when you point to it, you can see the changes here. Uh, so this is, um, uh, the, on the x-axis is, um, is the time, and the y-axis is, uh, uh, I think is the death rate or what, uh, yeah. Of then divided by male and female. So you can see that the upper graph is male and here is female. So when you when you move a uh, point over the on, on that one particular point time, uh, the the number of male and females is is appeared on the top right hand corner. Huh? So in February 1978, uh, here, right? In February 1978, male is 2284 and female is 853. Huh? Uh, not only that, you, you, you can see on the graph of what is the number of observations 
uh, you can always, there's a slider here, you see. You can always put it in, you can slice this over here as well. Yeah. So you can zoom in and you can, you can zoom in as well. Yeah? So that is actually uh, quite, uh, quite, quite, quite useful. Uh, we'll show another one. Uh, this is another one. This is a predicted lungs death in UK. Yeah. So the, the, after do, after carry out some modeling, so that is a predicted trend with the confidence interval here highlighted in pink color, and the red color is the line that predicted values. So the same thing on the right hand side here. Right top hand side is the predicted values. Right. So now we'll go into the one that is uh, saying that how to, 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 to uh, uh, that there's a uh, rotation is possible in also in, in the outside. So there's a rotation, right? So the histogram at the top and the scatter plot at the bottom. So another example, so a bit small, yeah. right? So there's the iris one, huh? uh, three, three variables from the iris uh, pedal, pedal and uh, sepal length and width. So, but this showed uh, the three of them, so it can be rotated in a three dimensions space. Yeah? So you can, you can refer to the GIF, you just click on the GIF, you'll get the one that uh, I just shown. Yeah, so there's another interesting one um, that is uh, showing, uh, uh, let, uh, there's a year here, uh, this is showing what is the growth of wealth and a life expectancy by continent, the, the, the five continent here. And this, the, on, on the left-hand side is the GDP per capita on here. It's the same, same uh, exit here also. And the outline extensity on the Y exits. And the size of the bubble is the population levels. And the color is differentiated by the continent. So there's quite a number of information here. We'll, we'll show the animation shortly. So the year here will change. Huh? So there's one information here about year. Another information is the relationship between life expectancy and GDP per capita. And the bubble here, the size of the bubble is the population and the color is the continent. Right? So there's quite a lot of information here for this particular animation chart. Right? I'll show the first one. You can see the changes of year here. So you can see that the movement of GDP per capita is moving higher to on the right-hand side. And also the life expectancy is also moving upwards. So there's a change here from 19, and then it repeat from, from the earlier years to the later years, right? Yeah, so it's quite useful information here huh? uh, with the animation chart here. And this one, I think, is probably even more useful. They divided into the five continents. So you can see the changes over years, how the Asia one has moved so quickly up here. Right? And the FMRI. Right? This is the last uh, illustration. Yeah, you can see, you can see the brain moving, and also inside. And another one. Yeah, 
Uh, the, 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 all this graph I've shown is um, just a tip of the idea. Yeah, there are much more you can explore uh, to, 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 to use the graph that suits your, your study, suits your research. Uh, there, are, there are books on this. Uh, there are books written on ggplot2 for Latin. Uh, would use uh, graph. Our graphical cookbook is a good one to start with to know the syntax. And uh, I probably won't recommend this. Uh, there's very few examples, but uh, a very long wording in, in explaining the concept, unless you're, you're interested in that. The our book have some graphical, but they also they also show other 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 uh, other types of uh, things there. And it's a quite a thick one. And uh, some other uh, books as well. Huh? Uh, this one also probably uh, not so good if you want to start with our graphics. And I'd like to thank uh, uh, Madeline and, and the one that behind that operating all this uh, Suya. And if you have any I think we, we do not have a uh questions at the end now maybe we could go on to the next slide take care could you yeah so we have really come to the end of uh, the the session today um, basically uh, as promised we are going to have uh, a survey that is uh, rolled out for you to, to uh, fill in so please uh, feel free to put in your your comments and, and your feedback and that will be nice for us to see the responses and we do read it and therefore you know based on the responses that we have last week we try to incorporate it into this session today uh, uh, but uh, here I would like to really thank Dr. Tan to you know um, really I think it's really uh, quite tiring and draining you know to, to pull through this one and a half hour to to uh, to show us and share with us how you we can use R in our daily lives with our work whether it be our research or even in our school work or assignment yeah and and really thank you so much for your time and in preparation for for this uh, session um, basically you know if you have any um, questions or follow-up projects that you want to really um, discuss with Dr. Tan uh, I put it into the chat as well um, Dr. Tan's email you can actually approach him and see what kind of collaborations that you know that can spring off from here and yeah please feel free to, to drop him an email as well that that's something that you know you can take away from this session so yes uh, we appreciate your your feedback and uh, this is the link thank you Suyan for putting it into the chat yeah, we, we really appreciate it. Um, and thank you for your time. Yeah, really appreciate your, your being in your uh, busy schedule to be with us. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hi, sorry. <laughs> sorry, hey, I wasn't hi, able Suyen. to help today. No, no, it's okay. Yeah, I, I think it's pretty everything. okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there were some questions in between. So um, managed to to address it. I think in between the yeah, some of them asked for the uh, slides last week. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And uh, Taekyung, some of them asked yes. about the data management session. Ah, oh, data management. Yeah.